Well, good afternoon and welcome to the January 26th meeting of the Board of Library Trustees of the Allen County Public Library. And today is one day before the birth of Mozart several hundred years ago, in case anybody wants to send a present. Uh, we will begin this meeting with the Board of Finance. And so, Sharon, could you call the roll? Absolutely. Kent? Present. Ben? Present. Jim? Present. Marty? I'm here. Paul is not here. Gloria is not here. And I am present. Thank you. Five present and two absent. I'll entertain a motion that we adopt the agenda. So moved. And second. a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. And David, you're on with investment right. report by the library treasurer. Thank you. Well, uh, this time every year we have a report on our investments over the year. And this is the first time in many years I can say I am happy to give this report because the interest has obviously increased. We, we went from in 2021 around 90,000 in interest earnings to a little over 610,000 mm. and that obviously is because the Fed is raising interest rates in their attempt to fight inflation. Uh, we are the beneficiary of that because our investments have to be in the most conservative uh, you know, investment tools and so consequently uh, things like the money market savings accounts, the bonds, things like that are all that we're allowed to put in. Uh, we are now, uh, as uh, in your packet is the uh, set of reports and the charts that I usually put out. You can see the massive growth in earnings and yields that happened in 2022. We're still enjoying those in 2023. Uh, not sure when the Fed will slow down on any rate increases, but uh, you know what, what's good for this report will be bad for the bond issuance because we'll have to pay more during that but you know we have to deal with good with the bad um, we are still as you can tell from this keeping most of our money in Lake City's money market savings account that is still paying an extremely high interest rate of 4.4 percent interest uh, totally liquid account uh, I can't and I included some CDs I can't even get close to that uh, rate on a 24-month CD. So it's easier to keep it in a liquid account, especially given the facility master plan, if we have to move forward with that, having those funds available for uh, whatever might come up is going to be necessary. Uh, I'm actually going to probably move a little bit more money in there. We, I'll talk about that in my financial or the treasurer's report into that account, move some more. But STAR has come up also, but they're not paying as much as is uh, Lake City is. Why would that be any question? And we have 2.2% right. higher. Why wouldn't yeah. we move it all there? Because I need to have, because the Star Bank acts as our cash flow. So I need to have at least 13 to 14 million there okay. because of, we don't have tax collections coming in until twice a year. So that constantly gets whittled down. That's the amount at the end of the year. By the end of, I'm probably going to move at least another $8 million into Lake City. Okay. That will leave enough to get us cash flowed through May when the first property tax distributions come through. So we did this similar last year. And so we'll move a little bit more in there, you know, and then get a little bit more return on it. I'm, uh, I'm still a little confused. Mm -hmm. um, this is a daily account. Right. Both of them. So we can put it in and take it out with the day's notice? Actually, we are limited in the Lake City to six withdrawals a month. Okay. So there is some, some limitations on that. And that's why we keep, plus we need, like I said, I usually keep around 11 to 12 million in order to cash flow our, our needs. Uh, a little less now because we don't have bond payments that we used to have. So we're not so. penalized for doing 30 Star withdrawals? No, mm -mm. no, that that's strictly a savings account, really. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and that, again, there's, there's a lot of transactions that come through there because that takes into account our self-insurance funds. So the claims for medical claims have to be funded all the time. The claims that we'll sign today, those are funded through that. So that money, 
flows much more than, let's say, the Lake City account. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, not much else. We are getting some interest, and I'm going to pay attention to them. There, many of the banks are approaching saying, well, two of the banks are approaching saying, we could construct bond, actual treasury bond portfolios that would pay, again, not as much as the 441, but it's good to see those being offered. And as, you know, as the Fed backs off on rates, those might become attractive again. We're constantly looking for those kind of opportunities. So uh, just kind of an FYI, we might see some different investments that, you know, by this time next year or during the year, especially if the Fed stops their increases. Any questions? That doesn't require a motion. No. no. Any other business in the Board of Finance? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn the Board of Finance. So moved. And a second. second. All those in favor, please signify by aye. 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 And opposed by nay, and it passes. All right, so let's get down to our real meeting. Not that yours isn't real. <laughs> yeah, a pretend meeting. Uh, make, make a believe meeting. Uh, of the Board of Library Trustees of the Allen County Public Library for January 26, 2023. Um, can we have a roll call? I'd love to do that for us. <laughs> uh, I am present. Sharon Tucker. Ben. Present. Jim. Present. Kent. Present. Marty. Present. Uh, both Gloria and Paul are not present. That is five present, two absent. Five present, two absent. Thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, let's have a motion, if you will, to adopt the agenda. So moved. And may we, thank you. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> thank you. Here's Paul. Okay. Let the record show that for the regular Board of Trustees meeting, Paul Moss came. Uh, if you don't mind, let's uh, group the minutes of the regular session, December 15th the ex of 2022, the minutes of the executive session of 2022, the minutes of the Capital Projects Committee executive session of January 11th, 23, and the minutes of approval of claims, January 13th, 2023. Actually, then I want to remove you from that. D. Yeah, the, the claims from the 13th, we oh, don't I have thought, those. I'm sorry, that yeah. was the one. Yeah. I removed the other claims. So it would just okay. be the A through C. A through C. I will move we approve the minutes for A through C on the agenda. Thank you. A second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <clears throat> Let's turn to our second financial report. That's right. That's right. All right. Thank you. Uh, in your packet are your board reports, and, and these are the pre-audited financials uh, for the end of the year. Uh, there's still a number of entries that will need to be made that we're waiting on information from, uh, like the county auditor. The, one of the things you'll see on the financials is there's a big difference between 2021 and and uh, now, and that's because the 2021 has such entries as the tax receivable. If you recall last year, uh, there was a change in accounting that allowed or that required us to book the property taxes to be received in the subsequent year on our financials. And those estimates will come from the county auditor's office, as well as the income tax estimates and there will also be things like the self-insurance fund for claims that are outstanding at the end of the year that have to you know, yet be paid. So there's some large ticket items that will be coming you know, in February is when those numbers usually. So the final statements will be adjusted, but these will give you an idea of where we stand uh, you know, as far as true expenses and, and revenues. Some of the highlights that I'd, I'd point out would be uh, that because of the increases in assessed value, uh, we continue to see the benefits of that, primarily in, let's say, tax caps. Tax caps came in about 200,000 less than what were estimated in 
2022 because assessed values rose, so more people were uh, above their cap limit. Uh, same with income tax. The good economy led to the state again issuing an excess amount. This is an amount that uh, even though they certify a share during the year of the budget, the actual tax collections for income tax come in much higher. And when that gets to be above a certain percentage, they have to distribute it. That was a $499,000 additional income tax item. I already mentioned during the finance report, we had close to 600,000 in interest that came in uh, versus the 90,000 in the prior year. Um, and then uh, self-insurance, we continue to do well there. That is the expenses uh, revenues exceeded expenses by almost 1.1 million. We currently have 7.5 million in that fund. Annual claims, as you can see from the financials, run around 3.35 million. So we've got close to two years worth of coverage in that. And that's one of the reasons, if you recall back to the budget discussions, why the auditors had suggested backing down a little bit on our amounts going into that fund. And so that our 2023 budget reflects that by about $800,000. We've uh, scaled back the contributions into that fund. So that's a good one. The one, uh, I don't want to say bad part, negative part, is uh, as you can see, Access Fort Wayne, the, the TV services grant, uh, because of the revenues that come in from the franchise fees have been declining for years, uh, we are now at a point where this year the revenues did not cover expenses. And so... That's Comcast fees? Uh, it's Comcast, Verizon. It's the, the franchise fees for the cable access. I see. That grant, the grant money that uh, comes in on your little... Your, the amounts on your bill that all get accumulated. Um, so we had to, they were short about 83000 this year, and so that had to be covered by the general fund. Uh, Norm, I'd have to ask him, but the grant, these are people who are using less and less cable. That's the, you know, streaming services, the things that... Things like that. That's the primary. The franchise cost. fee hasn't gone down. On no, no, but <laughs> less users on. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> makes sense. Right. So, uh, as I said, those are some of the highlights. As the the final numbers come in, I will bring revised numbers to you for the end of the year. But that's some of the highlights of the year. <laughs> Obviously, what I mentioned in there, there's uh, we did all of the budget transfers from December. All the lines look fine at this point. Nothing to report. And then um, I think that's all the financial items. The only other one I'm going to cover in the next segment is the carryover encumbrances. That's the uh, other, the final year-end activity that needs to be done budgetarily to uh, carry over encumbrances, uh, the commitments that exist at the end of 2022 into 23. Thank you, David. Yep. Any, any questions on the financial report for December? Well, let's move then to item five, the approval of claims. I think we do have to accept the financial. I'll make a motion to approve the finance report. I keep Second. forgetting. Okay. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. And now the approval of the claims. And these are actually, like I said, why I removed section or the minutes from the approval of claims of January 13th. We've combined it into this one. Uh, register so this has both the 13th and today's claims total of around 3.9 million the largest ones this time are uh, employee premiums 301,000 uh, train uh, our, our HVAC main contractors at 297,000 and then uh, I was hoping I wouldn't see this one but snow removal 85,000 <laughs> so uh, those are just some of the larger ones the the largest ones obviously also include library materials sure yeah so so can i have a motion that we approve the claims as distributed so moved thank you and second this, thank you any discussion all sure. in favor please signify by aye aye opposed, aye. aye. opposed by nay that passes. The claims will be circulated for your signature. Now we have resolution 2023-01. 
to carry forward certain encumbrances to 2023. All right. Um, this is, as I said, the final item that uh, gets approved by the board. It's budget adjustment. What this is, are any of the POs or uh, commitments that exist at the end of the year that are still outstanding that will be billed in 2023 for. Um, and the, the reason we do this is because that those funds were committed in 2022. They were committing the 2022 budget. Consequently, in order to pay those, in 2023, we need to do this official action so that we aren't using 2023's appropriation to pay for prior year items. So the total on this one uh, this year is 722,131.80. Uh, last year was around 687,000. So they tend to stay pretty uh, straightforward. The predominant as I've uh, broken down in here uh, 577,000 is in the general fund, 140, well, almost 45,000 is in the gift fund, and 539,000 of that total is library material. It's the outstanding Baker and Taylor, Ingram, other, you know, you know, material items. And then there's some HVAC project items that are still in, that will be paid out about 170,000 on that. So again, I've got the listings that will be here. This is one of those uh, resolutions that require all of your signatures on it because it is a, a budget adjustment. Okay. So. Any questions on the resolution 2023-01? Not, can I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you, Jim. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. It passes. That too will require some. I'll bring this around for signature. Okay. Well, David, I think you can take a rest. I know. I can breathe again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Susan, you can't breathe now, so start. Talking. Okay, I'm up. We have had elected officials in our libraries recently. On December 29th, State Senator Justin Bush came to the main library to meet with me and tour our role in center. He is a history buff, and he was very, very impressed. And also, last Saturday, State Representative Kyle Miller had his first town hall, I believe, of his elected official career at our Pontiac branch, and I did attend that, and that was very nice. Our um, senior digitization manager for the Internet Archive, Jeff Sharp, gave me an end of the year report and I thought the board would be interested as well. So our the Internet Archive, they are our partners that have a scanning station in the lower level of our library. So according to Jeff, 2022 was another good year for the Internet Archive's Midwest Regional Digitization Center at the Allen County Public Library. We digitized a total of 6,934 items spread over 61 separate collections. That's, and these are big numbers, 1,555,393 pages, including 1,408 folded out images and folio images. That includes over 2,000 books we've digitized for the Genealogy Center, over 1,900 of which were done by the Family Search volunteers who continue the successful collaboration between Family Search, the ACPL Genealogy Center, and the Internet Archive. So it is a trifecta of partners that are making so much information available for researchers globally. So we're very proud of that. And speaking of collaborations and partnerships and being proud, last week the Mary Penrose Wayne chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, which I'm a member, um, presented the Friends of the Lincoln Collection with a $50,000 gift to support the continued work of the Roland Center. So for that, um, the Lincoln Workroom in the Roland Center will now be called the, and this is a, a long title, the Mary Penrose Wayne Chapter National Society Daughters of the American Revolution Workroom in honor of Jeanette Sterling. And again, that is a long-standing <laughs> partnership with the daughters. They are here frequently to do office hours with potential members and help them with their genealogy research. They regularly have their meetings in our meeting room here. And when they were introduced to the Roland Center, they were so impressed and they felt that the mission of the Roland Center intersected with their work in preserving history and patriotism and education. And it was a great fit. So we are very grateful for that gift. And speaking of 
gifts and awards. Um, the foundation, the Library Foundation, was awarded a $31,726 American Rescue Plan Act subgrant through the city of Fort Wayne, and the funds will be used to purchase additional equipment and supplies for the main library maker lab, plus create mini labs at the Pontiac, Shawnee, and Hessen Castle branches. Another season of AARP volunteer tax preparation has begun, and it's coordinated by Nate Bernard. Eight of our libraries will be tax help sites, and last year more than 2,000 returns were completed at an ACPL location. So it is a very popular and needed service. And there's no charge for that. No charge at all, no. We've had some of our staff members find other opportunities and we hold space for both. We are very sad to see them go and also very proud of their accomplishments. Mike Ashby, who was here last meeting, um, formerly our system services manager, he resigned a few weeks ago to assume the executive director position at Peabody Public Library in Columbia City. And Myra Presley, who was formerly our employee experience coordinator, she also resigned earlier this month, and she is now the professional development manager at the city of Fort Wayne. So again, big losses for us, but fantastic opportunities for them, and we wish them well. And late breaking news, Nate Bernard is transitioning over to that system services manager position. He was ready for a new challenge, and to build a skill set in that area and brings a lot of experience overseeing circulation systems. So it's a, it's a great fit for us and we're thrilled that Nate will have a new challenge with us. A request for proposals was issued at the end of December for benefits consulting and broker services, thanks to LeRae and proposals are due back to us by March 31st, 2023. LeRae, is there anything you'd like to add? To that uh, no I mean I have more information if anybody has questions but we're in the middle of the process now okay. and a few more late breaking items that didn't make the report um, I wanted to remind you that next month we will be back out at the branches our meeting is at the DuPont location and they are very excited to host you also in your packet was our quarterly our collection report that we have been doing monthly and a suggestion was made, I think by Marty, a few months back that you might like to see it go to a quarterly format versus monthly. And that is truly at the board's pleasure. We can make either happen. But at, since we're at the beginning of the year, I wanted to revisit that and see if you'd like to continue for the collection report to be monthly or if a quarterly format would work better for you. All right, and I think I brought that up. One, I was gonna jot it down to just remark again how great it is. It's, I think it gives a great summary of the library and I think it's incredibly helpful. <clears throat> I also think, I know it takes time to put it together, and I think quarterly is all I need it for, and I just, unless other board members think they need it monthly. And I, I know we've also discussed, is it is it publicly available uh, at all, or is it just for the board members to look at? I know it's, we mm -hmm. keep it, but I think it's a great resource, and I think it's incredibly helpful to me uh, when I talk about the library to show how much is being done everywhere. <laughs> so. yeah, absolutely. It is available to the public and they are welcome to contact me, library director at acpl.info. I'm happy to send that out. Could we just post it on the website? We can do that as well, sure. It's interesting looking at the, it, it's a treasure trove of information. It really is, yeah. It helps clarify a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does quarterly still work for, does monthly work for everybody or quarterly? It's, it's really up to you. I, I am not opposed to you going quarterly if it doesn't mean that you guys are going to try to, um, I think Marty's suggestion was to try to make it easier for you guys on what you have to put together. If you're still going to put three months of information in one packet, mm -hmm. then monthly spreads that work <coughs> out. So I'm, for me, a quarterly is fine if it doesn't add more work in one period of time. I've talked to the staff who prepare it. It's really six in one hand, half a dozen in the other for them, whatever you'd like. Okay. I mean, mine was just trying to save you guys time, so. Uh, Who's in favor of quarterly? Raise your hand. Quarterly Who wants sounds it monthly? Good. Who wants it daily? <laughs> <laughs> we can do that too. Yeah, like <laughs> quarter wins. Okay. That's great. And one more comment of note so speaking of quarterly you also received in this packet the quarterly managers report mm -hmm. um, which is also available on our website or will be soon 
and I encourage you to take a look at that because it is also a treasure trove of information. And I wanted to specifically mention some of the happenings at our Georgetown Library. As you know, our Georgetown Library benefits from a very large and robust after-school audience from the local middle school, and we are always looking for new and exciting ways to keep them engaged. And this last semester was a pilot program for an after-school program that was spearheaded by our teen librarian there, Kara Sims. And this semester at Georgetown, they offered that after-school program for 88 days. And each day, they had an average attendance of 28 students for an overall total of 2,448 children in attendance throughout the semester. And for the students who were part of that program who had their grades improved, they had a wrap-up party sponsored by us at the Georgetown Bowl on the last day. So they had bowling and pizza and all kinds of fun. And as we go into this next semester, we're still looking for best ways to serve this group. And in a few days, we are going to have a parents meeting at the Georgetown Library to get feedback from the families who are using it after school. And Beth, did you want to add any comments about that? Um, we're seeing a robust use of our after school program, but also many, many students who are still visiting the library without participating in the after school program. So we really have two populations of students after school. And the parents' meetings are will, will be designed and open for all parents um, in the Georgetown area. Um, we've been specifically collaborating with the Black Hawk Middle School administration, and uh, the principal there will be inviting all the parents of Black Hawk Middle School students to these meetings. But the idea is to talk about longer term solutions um, for after school opportunities um, to build on what the library is already doing. Um, we have been discussing with the Boys and Girls Club whether uh, a location out in that part of town would be an appropriate next step that could provide greater growth opportunities for the students in a maybe a, t a space that's more tailored for students um, for that after school time. So we're looking forward to getting parent uh, feedback about what's happening now and interest in what might be happening in the future to help guide us as we make plans going forward. That's got to stress the capacity of the building too. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It's yes. Okay. That's all I have. Well, thank you. Any questions of Susan on her report? Very good report. The format of this, uh, what, maybe it's laid out graphically differently, but it's, it's very pleasing. Thank you. Thank you. It has evolved along the way, um, but that's great praise. I will take that back to Kara in our marketing department, and Elena also helps with that. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Are there any items of new business that should be brought before the body? Seeing and hearing none, how about public comment? Any public comment? Would, yeah. Sir, if you'd like to, if you're yeah. here, would you come to, we have a microphone? Oh, oh, thank, you. thank you. If you give us your name and your address and your discussion item. You are my name and address? Please. It's Charles Lim at 4002 Dalewood Drive here in Fort Wayne. Thank you, sir. And what would you like to share with us? Well, I'd like to know what brought about the lifting of the fees and fines, why that was done. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He wanted to know about the lifting of the fines and fees, why oh. that was done. The reasoning behind why? it. Why? Yeah. We'd be, we'd Can be someone help me there? Yeah, sure. Uh, the board decided based on statistics that were available that it was uh, a detriment to uh, our patrons uh, to use of the facility and that in the long run, the business of the library is to provide opportunities to read books. Uh, we did a fine-free juvenile <coughs> trial period and got excellent responses from the family saying now we can have an opportunity to go back to the library and do all the great stuff that's in it. And so we looked uh, at generalizing it for the entire population and felt that it was worth the effort so rather than penal, now if people destroy books, that's a different story. These are overdue books. 
Okay. Oh, well. I'm from the old school. I think that was a mistake to be counted. Uh, and you won't notice much change this year, but next year and the years after that, I don't think the people will. Well, I appreciate your, your opinion, sir. Uh, the statistics that we looked at to brought this to the board's attention showed the opposite. Uh, okay. But thank you for expressing your opinion. Is there anything else you'd like to share? All right. Our, the second thing was, well, I'm not satisfied but about the fees and fines, but the second thing was, do we have a course in the on the Constitution available to the students? As a, a program, or does DAR provide that opportunity? Or? I'm not aware of a library program on that. We have plenty of books about the Constitution, and I believe the DAR um, might do a display during <coughs> Constitution Week but I'm not aware of any library programs about that. I would think the schools might, but not here in this building that I know of. Okay. I can't speak to that. It's not library related, but I'm an active proponent of a program called We the People, which is oh. a constitutional uh, education program for uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers, and in fact, el elementary schools as well. Uh, and teachers in high schools have to voluntarily do it, but if they do, there's a large number, there's a materials that are provided, and there's actually a competition on their knowledge uh, yeah. that we do, uh, basically in a hearing kind of format. Uh, but I'm all in favor of learning the Constitution and okay. teaching it more. Well, I, think I have a <laughs> set of DVDs uh, of a full course 101. Uh, it was... Uh, provided to me from Hillsdale College. You've probably heard of Hillsdale College. Yeah. And uh, I'd be glad to make that available to the library okay. if you're interested. Susan. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else, sir? All right. I'll bring it in sometime. I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me. Thank you. Thank but who should I, or where should I bring it? To your office? Um, you're welcome to bring it to the second floor administration wing, absolutely. Okay, very good. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir, thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone else? I don't see anyone. Anyone uh, online? Anyone not there, online? There okay. aren't any questions or comments from YouTube. Okay. None. Okay, well then it's time for item 10. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. And, uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. We do have an executive session, uh, so let's stay here and take a little break and then come back and we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Paul Jill is going to be down in just a minute to have you sign some paperwork.